Welcome back to the Chess Goals YouTube channel. We got a good video in store for you today. This is Brigadara, a Chess Goals member against the Isabel bot on chess.com. And coming up, we're going to see three brilliant moves in a row by White. I've never seen this before. So let's jump right into the game. We have e4 by White, Sicilian defense, c3, knight f6, e5. So this is coming out of the Chess Goals e4 course that we have. We recommend the c3 Sicilian. And this is kind of the spirit of our opening. We try to kick this knight off of f6, develop this knight to f3, and play bishop to c4. So we go for this kind of consistent structure every time. And the idea is we want to play d4 and have this nice pawn chain pointing towards the black king. So we want to focus all of our effort on attacking the black king. Get our pieces over there to the king side. So after bishop c4, bishop e7 by black, now pawn to d4. Excellent move. Gaining this space in the center. Knight to b6 by black. This is a common idea. Kick the bishop. And here we usually recommend bishop to b3. The reason for this is because we want to keep the bishop on this diagonal temporarily. Also set up the idea of bishop to c2. And the reason that bishop sits nicely on c2 is because we can put the queen in front of the bishop, setting up this checkmate threat on h7 when the black king is cast kingside. The idea is let's get that bishop to c2, and then we'll go for that checkmate threat later. Here black played c takes d4, and typically in these lines you'll see c takes d4 back, and that's what white played in this position. But queen takes d4 according to Stockfish is a little bit better, and the reason for that is because black wants to get this d pawn up, either d5 or maybe even d6, and try to trade off the strong e pawn and remove some of this congestion on the back rank. So black's really looking to move the d-pawn. By taking with the queen, black can't safely get away with a d-pawn push, because white can take, and now there's a dual threat attacking the bishop on e7, and the queen attacks the pawn on g7. So queen takes d4, small improvement there for white, but c takes d4 is in the spirit of the opening, so I do understand why white played it. And now the bot plays pawn to h6. This can become an anchor point later. So whenever you have a king side that's sort of exposed like black says, there's no knight on f6, and you see the white pawns kind of pointing towards the king, as the black player here, you really want to avoid moves like h6 unless they're necessary because this is going to be a target for white later. That h6 pawn could either be captured with bishop takes h6 sacrifice, or it could be opening up the light square diagonal, which we just talked about, bishop c2 and queen to d3 coming up soon. After h6, white castles, good move. Castles by black, and we see already this is a blunder. And it's not easy at first glance to understand why, but it's because of this idea. Bishop c2, queen d3 going for the mate threat in combination with that bishop pointing at h6 and the knight hanging out in the area on f3, also ready to jump over there and join the attack. So here, white played knight to c3. It's marked as a mistake by Stockfish. The right idea, though, is coming up next. d5 by black. And the reason this gets a question mark is because when you see one side kind of going all out for this attack on a flank, usually the best way to counter those attacks is to play quickly in the center. So in this position, black's king is about to get attacked. She should try to open up the center. Isabel should play pawn to d6 and try to trade off the e-pawn. Let's eliminate some of this pressure that white is putting on the center. d5 closes things up. So now the bot is in trouble. Because with these pawns closed up, and these pieces all trapped on the queen side, it's very easy for white to shift their forces king side and get an attack going over there. Queen to d3 by white. Knight to c4. And now we see this idea come to play. Queen to h7, checkmate, threat of mate in one. g6 by black. Bishop takes h6. So really black is already in trouble here. How do you prevent queen to h7 check? Even f5 is not a great move. After e takes f6, rook takes f6, queen h7, knight e5. Everything is coming at the black, black king position. Um, pawn to b3 is also good, kicking this knight and then knight e5 next. because We don't want to allow the trade knight for knight. This is already a 10 point stockfish advantage, so black is in huge trouble. Black decides to play g6, sacrifices the h-pawn, 
but he does get knight, or she does get knight takes b2 in return, attacking the white queen. So here, Brigadia keeps it cool, tries to get their queen into play, plays queen to e2. Queen to e3, a little bit stronger, but as we'll see in the next move, white does get the queen going in that direction. Rook to e8, saving the exchange, so there's no bishop takes rook. Now we see queen to e3 and queen to f4. So this queen is trying to inch her way towards the black king. Currently, she's looking at ideas like knight to g5, or maybe bishop to g5, bring the queen over this way, but we need the queen to help in the attack. Black plays bishop to b4, and now we see knight to g5, the first brilliant move. And the reason this is a brilliant move, look at Stockfish. Knight g5 is not even listed in the top three moves right now. Stockfish wants to play moves like knight to e2, saving the knight, rook to b1, trying to figure out what to do over here on the queen side. Now, finally, knight g5 pops up as the top move. That's why this is a brilliant move. It looks like white might be sacrificing the knight on c3, potentially. And the knight seems a little funny on g5, if black can simply defend the f1. Why is the knight on g5? So here black plays queen to e7, not queen to f6. Queen to h4 by white, another brilliant move. This is great. Look at what's about to happen here. There's a big attack coming. White does sacrifice the knight on c3, though. So if you want to pause the video here, try to find the third brilliant move in a row. There's a really strong move here for white. All right, white finds it with bishop to g7. Three brilliant moves in a row. Bang, bang, bang. First, we had knight g5, queen h4, and bishop to g7. And the problem for black is queen to h8 and queen to h7 are both threatened, and she can't get out of both of them. King takes g7, queen h7 check, king has to move to f8, and queen to h8 checkmate. So I want to thank Brigardia for showing this game. This comes out of the chess goals 1e4 course. This is our c3 Sicilian repertoire. Uh, really nice game. I've never seen three brilliants in one game. That's awesome. I'm going to leave you guys with a link up above. It's going to be a opening, the Tardic Hour, where I had two brilliants in one session using the same sacrifice, Bishop Takes H3. So make sure to check out that video next. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.